Hello everyone and welcome to this wind guide, an updated version from the wind guide 1.0 and 2.0 and first and foremost before we start I want to give a huge uh, credit to George Daniel Rees which is the creator of the first ever wind chart in the game of Golf Clash and also the one that cracked the code and made it a bit easier for us mortals uh, to adjust for the wind while using the rings and in this video I'm going to focus uh, to those players that feel that they are beginners when it comes to adjusting for the wind. Of course, we're going to cover some sections that's going to be a little bit more advanced, but in the end, we're going to cover from the beginning, like what's one, uh, what's a ring? Uh, why is it important to know how to adjust for the rings? And what is the value of one ring determined of the clubs that we're going to use? Then we're going to go over and check for maximum distance, uh, medium distance, minimum distance, why that is important to actually have some type of knowledge on how that, how that works and how that is going to affect our adjustments. From the third step, we're going to go over something called elevation. That means like either we're going to, are we going to play uphill or we're going to play downhill? Is the ball going to be affected less or more depending on the way the course is created? and how is that going to affect uh, the ball and the club, etc. Uh, last part, we're going to go over something that is called power ball. And that is like, we're going to take a look into, okay, uh, if I'm going to use a ball with power, which means that we're going to extend the distance of our club, the ball is going to travel in more in the air. Is it going to affect the value of the rings uh, as well? Yeah, and also in the end, we're going to summon it up uh, with some words as well. And of course, in the middle, we're going to have some videos going to show you some examples, etc. So uh, very, uh, very happy to present this. And I think it's time to just get uh, started here. So you can see the target here on the screen and on the left side of the screen. There you do have like the white ring, you do have the black ring, the blue ring, the red ring, and also the yellow ring. The black ring is also an invincible ring. And you will see the see that as like a green ring in game as you're going to see the grass. And first, we need to take a look at like what is one ring uh, when it comes to that. And that is we're going to go by looking at it like this. So we first take a line just in the center there, just cutting the target in half. So and we're going to start adjusting. Always start adjusting from the center target of the yellow ring, like the bullseye, like exactly the bullseye. And then the edge of the yellow ring is going to be one ring. The edge of the red ring, then we are up to two rings. The edge of the blue ring, that is three rings. The edge of the black or the invincible ring is going to be four rings. And the edge of the white ring is going to be five rings. And that is um, the white ring. So don't uh, don't mind that it's a green numbers. It's just to make it look a little bit clearer, especially during the black ring there here on the screen. So I will have to say, like when it comes to do, uh, to adjusting for the uh, rings, it's very important to have some knowledge about that because sometimes you will have to find yourself in situations during a regular game or a tournament game where you will have to hit a specific spot, and the better you adjust with the rings, the closer you will get to the pin. Therefore, the more shot you will eventually drop into like an extra hole in one, an extra eagle, an extra albatross, and therefore win more games. An, e an easy example, but I will have to say from the experience for myself, I did play only with feelings and notes uh, in my the, a bigger part of my game. I would say at least like for the first six, seven, eight months, I did that. Sure, I did win a lot of games and I did play well, but while adjusting and, and uh, involving the ring system in my game has been making my, uh, me myself being more spot on, being feeling more confident while going into a specific hole when I'm playing that I only can kind of rely on, okay, I'm going to hit my ball perfect and uh, then I'm going to be close. And that is the thing that we are looking for. But of course, then we need to take it from the beginning. We need to understand that, okay, the edge of the yellow ring is going to be one ring. Edge of the red ring is two ring. Edge of the blue ring is three rings. Edge of the black ring is four rings. And edge of the white ring is five rings. So now when we have determined that, we're going to take a look at a feature or a tool as it's called on golfclashnotebook.io. Golfclashnotebook.io is a 
a very good source when it comes to find specific tools uh, to the game of Gold Clash. We're going to focus on the tool called Wind Shard Creator. And the Wind Shard Creator let you pick the club that, you're, that you do have combined with the level that you do have on your club. And for that you will find the value of one ring, two rings uh, and of up to ten rings of your club. And that is something that is important for you to write down or save it down as somewhere because that is something that you will have to train and you will have to memorize that one in, that in the end if you're not using some type of application that will save that for you when you're playing a game. So we're going to add the clubs that we are having here in this uh, video, wind guy video. We're going to have the extra mile level 8, we're going to have the sniper level 10, we're going to have the goliath level 8. And we're going to have the Thorn level 8 as well. So we're going to just add the Goliath. We're going to add the Thorn. And there we go. So, okay, now we're going to press Create Chart. And you will be able to see me getting a chart up here now. So, and for us to get it a little bit easier for us, we're going to zoom in here. As the thing that we're going to focus on here is the max column here. So you will be able to see like two columns in basically one column. Like max, it says 2.14 on one side, 12.81 on, on the other side. And that is kind of an easy way to understand like what those numbers kind of mean. So first we do have, we take a look at the left side as well. Like, okay, the yellow ring is going to be one ring for us. So the value for one ring of the extra mile is going to be 2.14. But to make it even easier for us, because it's very hard to divide the wind, the wind that we're going to have with 2.14. So we're going to make the extra mile as two miles per hour per ring. So the yellow ring is going to be two miles per hour, so two, and the red is going to be four. So we basically multiply our rings with two. So uh, three is going to be six, four is going to be eight, five rings is going to be 10. That is how we're going to focus on that. And that you have on the right side, the column on the right side, that is for ring number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number 10. But as you can see, the, the value there is going to be very high. So that is only applied if you like playing on the highest level basically. When it comes to the sniper, we do have the, basically the same type of setup. The sniper is one of the easier clubs to adjust with and also the best club to actually start with, to practice with. And the value of the sniper level 10 is 1.05. So we're going to take that 1, take away the, the 0 0.5 there and just make it 1. And then we do have 2, we do have 3, we do have 4, we do have 5. So with, as you can see on the target, we do have on the left side. So Again, one ring, the yellow ring there is valued one mile per hour. Two rings is going to be two miles per hour, three rings, three miles per hour, four rings, four miles per hour, five rings, five miles per hour. And as the value of the sniper is one per ring, it's going to be easy for us to adjust with that. So, okay. And then we go over to the Goliath. We see the Goliath 1.96. We do the same as we did with the extra mile, but we take it up a notch. So two per ring. And then again, uh, for the yellow ring, two miles per hour. Red ring, four miles per hour. Uh, blue ring, six miles per hour. Uh, the, the black ring or the invincible ring, eight miles per hour. And then 10 miles per hour for the fifth ring. The thorn, going to do the same, take that one as a two miles per hour in reference uh, per ring. And it is important that you kind of sum it up to like firm numbers when you do start adjusting for the rings, because that is going to help you big time when it comes to that. So, okay, now we're going to take a look here as, uh, at one video where we're going to apply the system in one game. Pay attention to it, and I'm also going to talk about something called the take shot button. And the take shot button is something that is very important to have in mind when you're going to play a game, because that is going to be a helpful way to actually put your uh, put your target on the screen in the way that you want to adjust. So now we're just going to take this video up, and we're going to get going. So everyone, now it's time to go into a game here and kind of apply the system that we are. 
have been starting to talk about. And we're going to go first. I'm going to use uh, a way to adjust that I first and foremost, I'm going to turn my screen around. So the arrow is pointing north. Have in mind now that and that one ring for us is two miles per hour. And one ring for us is, as you can see here, going from the center out from the yellow ring is one ring. And that is two miles per hour. Two rings, four miles per hour. So one ring, sorry, one mile per hour is going to be half a ring. That is going to be half the yellow one. And as you can see, I'm using the take shot button as a reference. And then I'm going to just take my shot. And as you will see here, the ball is going to land exactly where we did put our landing position and roll nicely there on the fairway. I know that we're not having that hard wind here, but I think it's very important for us to, to just get the basics down. Then we need to just understand and go from like, okay, one mile per hour is going to be half a ring when it comes to the extra mile that is valued two miles per hour per ring. And when we do understand that, and do get that, then we're going to have such an easier time to adjust for higher wind because it's basically the same type of system. It's like two miles per hour per ring with the extra mile. If you have 10 miles per hour per ring, divide it by two and you get five rings. So we're going to take the second shot here and now we're going to have the sniper here. The sniper, as you remember, was valued one mile per hour per ring. And now we're going to first look like we set the shot up as we want to have it. Now we're going to use some top spin to put ourselves there on the top. We're going to turn the screen around so the arrow is pointing north. Look at the take shot button here on the screen that I'm actually going to set it up where the value says 1.7. So we start here from the center of the bullseye, one, and here we have two, and as you can see, 1.7. I'm going to drag it down a little bit, and use the take shot button, the edge there, and then we're going to take our shot. And that is going to roll nicely there to the top. I'm going to go from that distance. And and now we're going to take the third shot and I think again we're going to take that one in a basic way for us to understand. And I think it's very important when you're watching this video to, uh, to make comments uh, with the questions that you might have. You might not understand uh, some of the things that I'm explaining but then it's important that you ask because if you don't ask you will never know. And when it comes to the wind rings, when it comes to the to the method itself, it has been here for a long time, and it's big credit for those that came uh, came to the conclusion uh, way before how to adjust, and something that we'll all have to be grateful for. So, okay, we're going to go with the Goliath here. As you can see, we do have four point six in wind, and remember, the Goliath is going to be two miles per hour per ring. So we're going to line it up as we want to. We're going to turn the screen around so at the ar wind arrow is pointing north, 4.6 from the bullseye, have in mind two miles per hour, two, four, and six. So then we're going to go 2.3. Going to drag it down to the take shot button. I'm going to hit it perfect. As you will be able to see, we do hit the rough. We're coming in a little bit too much to the right, but we did hit the rough and that was our uh, target uh, target for the shot. And again, that kind of shows that it will give you such an easier time to hit specific spots like the rough, like specific small piece of fairways when you play your game. And that is something that I remember myself from beginner stages that I was basically, okay, let's cross my fingers here for the ball to bounce where I want it to bounce. And that is one thing that makes the ring system so good that you actually can give yourself a big amount of help to put yourself 
in a position where you can be a bit more aggressive as you because you know that you're going to hit your target as you're going to have the adjustment for it. So we're going to take it to shootout. I know the game is going to be a full game, but I think a game is the easiest way to apply. And again, it's all ways important when you go into a game to put yourself in a situation where you know the numbers of your club if that will be on a note sheet if that will be using a tool like the golf clash notebook or clash caddy app or caddy app depending on the device that you're having doesn't really matter the important is that you learn it because otherwise you're going to have a hard time if you will have to uh, if you will have to just guess uh, guess for it when you go into a game so now we're going to play here again we're going to play with the goliath and the goliath is going to be again two miles per hour per ring and i cannot stress that enough and that is why i'm saying two miles per hour per ring and when it comes to the wind system in general that is also a lot of other stuff that is going to be uh, able uh, going to be stuff that is not maybe necessary to learn but if you're going to go up into higher tours I definitely uh, I definitely recommend you to learn it and that is why we're going to take that in uh, further in the video here our opponent is putting us putting himself very close here which is a good shot and now it's our turn now we're going to first set our shot up with the Goliath, we're going to set it up as we're going to use three and a half ma uh, in backspin. So we're setting it up here. So, okay, we do have the arrow pointing north. Again, we do have two miles per hour per ring. We're going to go from the bullseye here. We have two just, uh, uh, just for the yellow ring. We do have four for the red one and six and eight and 10. Okay, so 2.6 is going to be 1.3 rings. We drag it down using the take shot button to be accurate. We hit it perfect. I'm going to let this ball bounce and slide nicely down towards the pin. So now we're going to focus a little bit more when it comes to elevation. So just stay tuned here in the video. We're going to go to step number two. So, okay, and there we have the video there, and now it's time for us to just put some focus when it comes to max, mid, and min adjustments, actually. And that is something that is important as to say, like, um, when we take a look here at the chart again, and now we do have a wider type of chart, we do have different type of numbers, and as you can see there on the top, it says max, mid, and minimum adjustment. And that is something that we will need to have some kind of knowledge of because as you can see on the value for one ring it's going to be higher uh, the less amount of distance you have on your club or the uh, the less amount of distance you're using of your club so and there is a way to determine like are you in medium distance of your club are you in minimum distance of your club there is no way to kind of be exactly spot on when it comes to medium, but at least for max and minimum distance, it's definitely going to be possible for. But as you can see, there is a difference of 0 0.70, uh, 0 0.7 rings when it comes to ma from minimum to max distance of the extra mile. And there you kind of wonder then, why is it so important then to have that in mind? It's like, but l think about it yourself. You go into a hole or a course, and you miss adjusting with almost one ring that is going to put you uh, pull you uh, far away from the target and that is a mistake i did in the beginning because i only thought like okay my ring value is going to be two two that i have on max distance of my extra mile but it's actually going to be uh, a higher value if i'm going to have less distance of my club so we're going to take a look at the video here and where we kind of like in a short and an easy way determine how we will be in minimum, maximum or medium distance. 
So I'm just going to show you here real quick how to determine uh, which type of distance we are in our club. So as you can see here, to get the maximum distance, drag the club out as far as possible, and we're like here we are in maximum distance. Then we're going to, then you're most likely going to see uh, players going more like this back and forth to kind of like okay, here we do have minimum distance of our club, here we do have medium distance of our club, and here we do have here we do have max. So max, medium minimum so if we would be in minimum minimum distance of our club we would be uh, adjusting with a different value of our uh, ring target then we would be in maximum distance as the ball is going to be traveling a lot further in the wind so okay there you have like you can see stretch it out and just take it back in. So then we're going to leave max, medium and minimum distance just for a little bit here and go over to something that is called elevation. And elevation is something that is kind of important as well. Uh, and something that is a bit more advanced when it comes to uh, how to adjust in for the wind. And the ele elevation is like either uphill, either downhill, uh, or it's go just going to be like a red regular way to play. So, and when it comes to downhill, uh, that will mean that the ball is going to travel in the air longer, which means that the ball is going to be affected more that by the wind. Therefore, like go uh, go longer with tailwind, go shorter with uh, headwind, and also go uh, what can I say? Also go a lot far further to the right or to the left, depending on which way you're going to have crosswind. And then you kind of need to get yourself in a situation where you figure out like is this whole downhill are we playing downhill or we playing uphill and adjust your value of the rings from that a normal way for me to adjust when it comes to downhill if i don't know how many percentage it will be i usually add a 10 percent uh, on my standard adjustment so if i would be in max distance of my club i'm going to add 10% on my uh, value. So 10% when it comes to two miles per hour in wind, sorry, two miles, uh, two in wind per ring, then we're going to add 0 0.2 as that is 10%. So it would be 2.20 uh, per ring. This is something of course that you should be writing down and kind of focus on having that like okay this hole is going to be downhill this is going to be uphill and definitely going to help you when you go into that hole like okay now i know it's uphill is 10 percent and i'm going to adjust for that so we're going to take a look here we're going to play one video uh, play one game here when we actually play a hole uh, and thinking about the elevation and i'm actually showing you how to actually determine if it is downhill and uphill so we're going to go into a game here and the first we need to know or at least try to find out is if this hole is going to be downhill, uphill or nothing uh, in between. So, and how to do that? Then? The thing that I did when I was new uh, to the game, I actually turned my screen around, look at the hole from the side. That could give me um, a mark of like if it is downhill or if it is uphill and then how to determine how much and how much determines mostly by experience so and that is why it's very important that if you find a hole where you feel like okay I'm just off completely on this hole all the time then it's going to uh, be important for you that you actually are uh, that you do ask another player that might have more experience so we're going to look at this hole as you can see here kind of directly it is played downhill so we do have that as a mark so we're going to add 10 percent in our adjustment here so when we play with our sniper here instead of playing that 2.6 per ring we're going to play it 2.8 per ring so we're going to just line it up as we do want we're going to turn it around so 2.6 with 10% extra it's going to be 2.8 and then we do have one we have two we have three so 2.8 is going to be approximately here you just look at the take shot button i'm going to take it there i'm going to go down and we're going to hit perfect as you will be able to see my ball is going to travel exactly as we wanted to and we get it close to the pin 
and that, that is how you do adjust when it comes to downhill. You're adding 10% to your adjustment. If the hole is going to have to, was going to be uh, uphill instead, then you need to determine like how much is the how much is uphill and go from there. If it would be uh, uphill, the normal and the standard is 10%. That is what I'm using when I start using the elevation. Then there will come holes where there is more, when there is 20%, 30%, and that is something that we do learn. But to start somewhere, it's important to understand that elevation plays a big part in the game. If you play downhill, the ball is going to be affected more by the wind. If it is uphill, the ball is going to be affected less by the wind. Then it's good to start and tweak with the 10% for uphill, 10% for downhill. So take away 10%. Add 10% and yes, it's a lot of numbers, but that is something that you will have to determine already from the beginning. And I'm going to, in the end, going to show you a way that it is an easy way for us to kind of give us the note when we're going into a hole. So, now it's time to go to the next step here, the, uh, which I would like to call power ball. And here we need to focus here like, okay, and think, Okay, if I'm going to use a ball, will the value of my rings going to be different depending on the ball that I'm going to have? And the answer is yes. It's not going to be a huge difference, but it's definitely going to be a difference that is something that we need to adjust for. And I'm going to take, uh, take this moment here to go through it and uh, also describe a little bit how I'm actually thinking. Here in the end, as a step three, I do want us to go over when it comes to the power uh, power ball, as it's called in the wind calculator. But to make it an easier explanation is that when you use a ball, you either use a basic, you use a Marlin, Navigator, Quasar, Titan, or a Kingmaker, or a Katana as a general ball. All of those balls, as we can go in here in our bag to see, it's going to have a different amount of power. Like for example, the basic ball, uh, sorry, we take the Marlin ball as an example, does not have any power. It does have wind resistance one and side spin one. When it comes to the navigator, do have power one, as you can see here down below. Allows your shots to be hit 3% further. Okay. And then we do have the Titan, which has power three, which is 7% further. And when it comes to the Kingmaker, also three uh, power three seven percent further berserker do have power five 13 percent further when we do have a katana which has power two five percent further and why is that important to have in mind then yeah because that is going to slightly change your adjustments because if we check out the calculator again would you have 10 miles per hour in the wind uh, as a reference wind we're going to start with a mall and does not have any power as you can see we do have four point sorry we can go with a basic ball ball in a basic ball doesn't have any power uh, or any extra power so then we do have 4.76 with the extra mile as in max distance we do have the sniper uh, 10 uh, 10 rings for 10 miles per hour look at the numbers here if we go to a power one have in mind it was adding three percent distance uh, of our like with combined with our club so we're going to reach further which means that the ball is going to travel in more in the air it doesn't going to, it's not going to affect the ground values of the rings like 2.10 still extra mile 1.0 when it comes to the sniper here but the thing that the thing that is changing is that we're going to have to adjust the rings a bit differently when it comes to reaching further with a club so it's basically going to be so it's going to be 4.9 uh, when it comes to max distance of our club with a power one ball with the extra mile and 10.3 rings when it comes to a power one so we're adding three percent to our adjustment there and same goes we go up to titan which is a power three ball look at that just look at the numbers there and then we do have the katana power two ball slightly changes again but again why is that a big deal but just face it if you do have a strong wind you go into uh, you go into a game you do have 10 mile per hour per, uh, per 10 mile per hour uh, in wind 
then adjust five rings or four and a half rings is going to mean a big difference for you when you're going to go for the pin as an example so that was just a quick note when it comes to powerball and actually why and how it's going to affect your club it's not going to be a video for it uh, but it's something to have in mind for you when you do play your game so now to have some final words before ending this video so there you have it ladies and gentlemen uh, uh, a long video uh, fully packed with some uh, good knowledge here about how to adjust for the win using the rings and I will have to say as a final words this might still be sounding a bit difficult for you and it's I can say that like this that there is no one that can take a first try or like not knowing something go in and mastering it directly and the thing that you have to do is to practice and practice is something that you can do in two ways uh, that I feel it's like the first way uh, you need to first and foremost write down the value of the rings depending on the clubs that you're using so if you do have an extra mile level 8 or you have an extra mile level 2 or a quarterback level 4 write your numbers down that is a first step to learning the values or the numbers for your rings there then you go in to a friendly game you take a uh, you take a pal uh, or you go in and play against another random person uh, on in a friendly game so you don't lose any trophies you play uh, play game of the game of the game and just adjusting thinking about those tips that we have been going through here or and those tactics like you turn your screen around so the arrow is pointing north you're using the take shot button and then you're uh, adjusting for the wind using the value of the rings that you do have and then make your shot you're going to manage to see that you're going to be very accurate when you do so but have in mind we do have 30 seconds on the clock and it's a lot of things to do on 30 seconds therefore we need to be kind of quick so a special tip for you when you do go down and practice and train for it is that you're actually letting the the shot clock go down to 20 seconds before you even actually start to adjust for your shot that will allow you to of course play a bit stressful but in the end when you can handle playing in 20 seconds even though you will stress sometimes you will have no problem adjusting when they come for 30 seconds but that is a bit extra but in the end practice is a key so last but not least do not forget to uh, make any type of questions in the comment section below as possible and will be there to answer you i understand there will be questions uh, so uh, make sure that you write it up and no questions are bad questions in the end we do have uh, packages for uh, players that want to go in more depth with their game uh, on patreon.com slash golf clash tommy because you can probably uh, hear that we could be talking about this for uh, hours when it comes to the specific details in adjusting for the rings but that will take for the next time in the end here i want to wish you the best of luck in the game of golf clash